guess who's back? Back again. Well, she's back. Oh, yeah, but the thing is, Tell we can't go. What's my name? Oh. Napoleon the Nightingale back again. Well, it doesn't work. No, it's but, it's but I do Napoleon quite like Napoleon for Nightingale. Three. I mean, we've picked a we seven syllable. We could say back. Um, but I do like the fact that in his very enthusiastic promotion of this podcast, mm. Mr. McCormick has coined the phrase Team Wilshire. Oh, yeah. I didn't we have quite like Team that, Wilshire so. working for Team, Team Hollywood, Hollywood in the fight against Corona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Do you know what? I actually had an email from a student this week. <laughs> Apologising for being late with one of their lessons because they've been ill and in brackets because he's listened to the podcast mm-hmm. where don't worry it's not see who must not be named. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, we are in number. we are in the fight against see who must not be named. We're part of a culture. Um, so welcome, welcome to week two of the podcast. <laughs> oh, that's week so funny. Um, now I thought it would be fun to start the opening with a little selection of. Um, uh, a, little, a little brief insight into how our week goes when we're not recording the podcast. Yeah. Because it's been uploaded onto YouTube, mm-hmm. which I'm sure mm-hmm. pretty much anyone that's listening to it. And um, I like to watch. I like to watch numbers. When I ran a theatre company, I used to obsessively watch the ticket sales go yeah, up. Yeah, you it's really did. So I've spent the week watching the numbers go up on YouTube. It's been riveting. <laughs> and I've been sending these messages. To Nightingale, and I just thought I'd read out a little selection of the of the messages that have gone between us. Okay, shall we act well, it out? Let's act okay. it out. You know, in the in the medium of drama, seeing as we are both theatrical. Ready? Yeah. One hundred and twelve views. Dude, dude, do I need to cut you off? I mean, at what point does this become an obsession? Laughy cry face, laughy cry face. That's pretty awesome, though. You know I love to watch the numbers. Man, I love to watch the sales. Oh, boy. And definitely at least 100 of those views are not me. That is V V V V V V V true. 164! Laughy cry face, laughy cry face. Dude. 167! Are three of those you? <laughs> Lol, no. I found a way to check without clicking play. Ah, Unagi. 182! One of them was me by accident, though. Ha ha. Wow! 193! Is it annoying yet? Yet. <gasps> Rude! I mean, it's only gone up by three in like an hour and a half. They're slacking. 196 and definitely not me! Lol. 197, so close to 200! Dude. 202! Come on now. Oh, uh, no regrets! Laughy cry face, laughy cry face. And I can confirm that we are now actually over... 300. This is very exciting. 300 views. I have to say, the journey to the 300 views has been exciting uh, with Mrs. Wilshire's um, constant updates. But hey, there we go. We have got a jam-packed show for you today, have we not, Mrs. Wilshire? <laughs> jam-packed. It's like a jam sandwich. It is like the jammiest donut you have ever had in your life. Ooh, where you take a bite and the jam, the jam just oozes out. out. Oozes is so, without further ado, we are going to take you over. Without further ado? Ado. Without further ado, we are going to take you to our first segment, section. which is you. It's the word of the week. It's the word of the week. Word of the week. Word of the week. Word of the week. Okay, so this week's word of the week is nonchalant. Nonchalant? I know, which I really love as a word. Um, And it's an adjective, and it means feeling or appearing casually calm and relaxed, not displaying anxiety, interest, or enthusiasm. Napoleon, you are very nonchalant in your approach. I think I I am. Do you reckon nonchalant is is like a French-derived word, does it say? It must be. Nonchalant. Nonchalant. Sounds better if you say it like that. It does sound better. Uh, Yeah, so have a go at working nonchalant into one of your pieces of home learning this week. It'd be really impressive if you can. Um, We're going over to one of my favourite people now um, for one of Mrs. Wilshire, sorry, Napoleon's favourite sections. You made that a whole lot of history. Napoleon's face, but the amount of energy she is putting into that is actually making me quite. You'd think tired. I was on stage with One Direction. Before we introduce Nero, can I just do a shout out that was especially sent in for oh, Nero? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah, just yeah. Just so that um, we can tell. Hello, good morning, Nero. Good morning. Nice to see you. So I got a shout out. I got an email from Quinn in Year Seven, 
saying, I love the podcast, I don't know how to spell it, but Nero, which he then spelt right, also known as Mr Tober, is my history teacher. Anyway, I want to shout out to him for being the best and my favourite teacher. Thank you for teaching me. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you, Quinn. How awesome is that? That is He's, awesome. He clearly can say that you're his favourite teacher because he doesn't have me, so that's fine. <laughs> I think he's still... He does have me, favorite. though, so... Oh, well, this is, this is awkward. Oh. Anyway, yeah. Nero, welcome back. <laughs> Second week. It's a pleasure it was, to be invited back. It was a big, it was a big hit this week in history last week, so no pressure. Well, let's start at the beginning of the week. Let's go in order. So the, the 11th, which was Monday. Yeah. Uh, so this in 1922 saw the first use of insulin in humans to cure diabetes, to control diabetes. Did you say used... insulin in humans? Were they using it in in non-humans? Yeah, they tried it in monkeys first. Of course they did. Poor monkeys. Yeah. But Leonard Thompson, a 14-year-old boy, managed to get the first dose of insulin. That's really cool. So that's, that is that's really cool. cool. Life saving technology at work there. Amazing. Again, science all comes back to science. Seriously, I goes. wish, I wish I was a scientist. Like, I love being a musician, but science is so cool. Scientists Part are saving stories. the world. Yeah, yeah but like historians just, just look like, at what other people have yeah, done. Yeah, and yeah. just stop it from happening again. Well, in theory. <laughs> well, I'm going to go a little bit further into the week now. We're going to go to the 15th of January. Oh, jumping ahead. Jumping way ahead. Now we're going to Friday. Friday? In the middle of the week. That's starting. today. Friday. Ah, so today. this week in history, well, today. I'm going to go back to the Tudors, unfortunately. But, oh, I love it. I love a bit of Tudors. Yeah. Who doesn't? But, I mean, 15, uh, well, I mean, I do. Well, I think they're great. I love the Tudors. Well, I know you do. They're just a bit gory. They're all right. Yeah. 1535 saw Henry VIII in state himself as the head of the church. Oh, big day. So big day. Big day today. When you say the head of the church, does that mean like the the head honcho, like the head the head of the yeah. the head priest, the head of yeah. the Church of England? So he's, he's like not, the pope. So he's like the pope, but not. He's the English pope. He's the English pope, yeah. But England doesn't have a pope. No, the England did have a pope, but it was the pope, the big pope. The pope in Rome you was the pope, and then Henry wanted to divorce Catherine of Aragon, and the pope said no. So Henry went, fine, I'll become my own pope. So he so fired the pope. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, like. That's called, it's the Reformation. How does she not know this? I know, this is, this is a major know, part of Don't history. tell us to rope it, because he would be so livid. Well, how much of this I would defi- I definitely remember everything about the war history. Like, the world wars, I'm all over. Tudor history. Oh. Sorry. Oh dear. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Just four years later, 1539. Same day. S- same day. Uh, Elizabeth is crowned the Queen of England. It's all happening First today! 15th of January! Your birthday January. happens to be today. It's a pretty big day. It's the birthday. day to Does be anyone have a birthday today? Happy birthday to you if it is your birthday today. I just thought I'd throw that out. Happy birthday. January the 15th birthday. Absolutely. Octavian, okay, uh, Emperor Octavian. Well, on the 16th of January, okay, so Saturday, he is finally given his emperor, his emperor name, which is Augustus. Augustus. Augustus Caesar, 27 BC. Oh and of course, God, as, as, a, as a Roman Emperor, emperor yourself, Roman Emperor, as a Roman Emperor yourself, of course you're going to shout out to one of your homeboys. Well, of course, he started it all. So. So. I feel like every week your mind gets blown. So, Nero is an Emperor. Correct. Of Rome. Yes. Correct. And Augustus. Yes. Augustus is the first Emperor of Rome. So, so what was Nero? Daddy. Nero is a different further down the line. They're like kings. Oh, yeah. okay. It just passes on down the line a bit. Okay. I'm, I'm going to stop asking for that. <laughs> January the 17th, our final day this week. Sunday. Okay, Sunday. Uh, so we've got two pieces. We've got 1773. Okay, James Cook becomes the first to cross the Antarctic Circle. Ooh, so new discoveries. Nice. And another one links again with the South Pole. Okay, Scott finally makes it in 1912. Although he is beaten but he does arrive in the South Pole. And, and survives. And survives. We like to ask all of our live correspondents which Mr. Tozer is. He's come in to record this live He's our special, special history correspondent. correspondent. <laughs> um, for a shout out. So anyone that might be listening right now, who would you like <clears throat> to shout out to this week? Well, I think it's got to be the rest of my colleagues in the history department. Ah, nice. Nice. Team history. Nice, nice. Team history, they are an awesome team and they are just so supportive. So and I think that should include Mrs. James, because she's team oh, yeah, history, but she's not in. Absolutely. But, yeah, but she's Mrs. in, James. but she's not in. But she's, she's in. in. No, but she's not in, but she's in the history team. <laughs> you catch my flow, bro? No. No. Okay. 
Well, fantastic. Thank you very much. Yay! <laughs> Guess what time it is. We are going back to our English correspondent. Guess who's back? <laughs> back back again. again. She is one of my favourite uh, correspondents. Oh, here we go. Uh, we're going over to... Oh, no, no, we're not just going back to her. This is the concluding part. The concluding part. part. We're going to find After out. Such a, I've had to wait a whole week for this. We're going to find out what happens. <laughs> we're going back over to Nefertiti. For the second part of Lambs to the Slaughter. By Roald Dahl. All right, she told herself. So I've killed him. <gasps> <gasps> it was extraordinary. Now, how clear her mind had became all of a sudden. She began thinking very fast. As the wife of a detective, she knew what the punishment would be. It made no difference to her. In fact, it would be a relief. On the one hand, what about the baby? Were there laws about murderers with unborn children? Did they kill them both, mother and child? Did they wait until the baby was born? What did they do? Mary Maloney didn't know and she wasn't prepared to take a chance. She carried the meat into the kitchen, put it into a pan, turned on the oven, put the pan inside. She washed her hands and ran upstairs, sat down in front of a mirror, fixed her makeup and tried to smile. The smile was rather peculiar. She tried again. Hello, Sam, she said brightly, aloud. The voice sounded peculiar again. Oh, I want some potato, Sam. Yes, perhaps a can of beans. That was better. But the smile and the voice sounded better now. She practiced them several times more. Then she ran downstairs, took her coat, and went out the back door, through the garden into the street. It wasn't six o'clock yet. The lights were still on in, in, still on in the neighborhood grocery. Hello, Sam, she said brightly, smiling to the man in the shop. Good evening, Mrs. Maloney. How are you? I want some potatoes, please, Sam. Yes, perhaps a can of beans, too. Patrick's decided he's tired and doesn't want to eat out tonight, she told him. We usually go out on Thursdays, you know, and now I don't have any vegetables in the house. How about some meat, then, Mrs. Maloney? asked the grocer. No, I've got meat, thanks. I've got a nice leg of lamb from the freezer. Do you want some potatoes, Mrs. Maloney? Oh, yes, they'll be fine. Two pounds, please. Anything else? The grocer turned his head to one side, looking at her. How about dessert? What are you going to give him for dessert? How about a nice piece of cake? I know he likes cake. Perfect, she said. He loves it. And then, when she'd bought and paid for everything, she gave her brightest smile and said, Thank you, Sam. Good night. And now, she told herself as she hurried back, she was returning to her husband, who was waiting for, for his supper. She had to cook it well and make it taste as good as possible because the poor man was tired and if she found anything unusual or terrible when she got home then it would be a shock and she would have to react with grief and horror. Of course she was not expecting to find anything unusual at home. She was going home with the vegetables on a Thursday evening to cook dinner for her husband. That's the way she told herself. Do everything normal, keep, absolute, keep things absolutely natural and there's no need for acting at all. As she entered the kitchen, by the back door, she was quietly singing to her, her, herself. Patrick, she called. How are you, darling? She put the package on the table, went into the living room, and when she saw him lying on the floor, it really was a shock. All the old love for him came back, and she ran over to him, knelt down beside him, and began to cry hard. It was easy. No acting was necessary. A few minutes later, she got up and went to the phone. She knew the number of the police station. And when the man on the other end answered, she cried out to him, Quick! Come quickly! Patrick's dead! Who's speaking? Mrs Maloney! Mrs Patrick Maloney! Do you mean that Patrick's dead? I think so, she cried. He's lying on the floor. I think he's dead. Well, we'll be there immediately, the man said. The car came up very quickly. When she opened the front door, two policemen walked in. She knew both of them. She knew nearly all the men at the police station. She fell into Jack Noonan's arms, crying uncontrollably. He put her gently into the chair. Is he dead? She cried. I'm afraid he is. What happened? In a few words, she told him, she told her story about going to the grocer's and coming back when she found him on the floor. While she was crying and talking, Noonan found some dried blood on the man's head. He hurried to the phone. Some of the other men began to arrive. A doctor, two de detectives, a police photographer, and a man who knew about fingerprints. The detective kept asking her lots of questions. 
They always treated her kindly. She told them how she'd been putting the meat in the oven. It's there now, she said, and how she'd gone to the grocer's for vegetables and how she came back to find him lying on the floor. The two detectives were exceptionally nice to her. They searched the house. Sometimes Jack Noonan spoke to her gently. He told her that her husband had been killed by a blow to the back of the head. They were looking for a weapon. The murderer might have taken it with him, but they might have thrown it away or hidden it. It's the old story, he said. Get the weapon and you've got the murderer. Later, one of the detectives sat down beside her. Did she know, he asked, if anything in the house could have been used as a weapon? She looked around to see if anything was missing. The search went on. It began to get late. It was nearly nine o'clock. The men searching the room were getting tired. Jack, she said, would you like a drink? You must be extremely tired. Well, he answered, it's not allowed by police rules, but since you're a friend. They stood around with drinks in their hands. The detectives were uncomfortable with her. They tried to say cheery things to, to her. Jack Noonan walked into the kitchen, came out quickly and said, look, Mrs Malone, did you know that your oven is on and there is meat still inside? Oh, she said, so it is. I'd better turn it off. She returned with tearful eyes. Would you do me a favour? Here you all are, all good friends of Patrick's, and you're helping to catch the man who killed him. You must be very hungry by now because it's long past your supper time. I know that Patrick would never forgive me if I let you stay in the house without offering you anything to eat. Why don't you eat up the lamb in the oven? I wouldn't dream of it, Noonan said. Please, she begged. Personally, I couldn't eat a thing, but it would be a favour to me if you ate it up. Then you can go on and get on with your work. The detective hesitated, but they were hungry. And in the end, they all went into the kitchen and helped themselves to supper. The woman stayed where she was and listened to them um, through the open door. She could hear them speaking amongst themselves. Their voices were thick because their mouths were full of meat. Have some more, Charlie. No, we'd better, we'd better not finish it. She wants us to finish it. She said we ought to eat, up, eat it up. That's a big bar the murderer must have used to hit poor Patrick. The doctor said the back of his head was broken to pieces. That's why the weapon should be quite easy to find. Exactly what I said. Whoever did it can't carry a weapon as big as that around with him. Personally, I think the weapon is somewhere near the house. It's probably right under our noses, don't you think, Jack? In the other room, Mary Maloney began to laugh. Oh my gosh, I did not see that twist coming! <laughs> it's genius! It is. There is the evidence! I mean, that re <laughs> that really is like a criminal mastermind right there. Thank you very much, Nefertiti. We look forward to uh, your next uh, short story next week. I have had some correspondence with Nefertiti, who is very excited about looking for exciting short stories. So she's mm -hmm. on the case. We're going to go to a slightly different section now. This is a new and exciting section that um, Mrs. Wilshire Napoleon came up with uh, just this, just yesterday. I'm so excited about this section. Oh, do we? Right, guys, we are, um, we're just going to, we'll be back. Um, we're just going to, uh, we're just, just going to teleport uh, to somewhere and we'll all, it will explain everything when we get there. We will be back very shortly. <laughs> okay, listeners, <laughs> we have transported by the wonders of technology into our room of requirement for this week. So we are in a room of the school and Nightingale is going to provide you with two sound effects and one clue. And based on those two sound effects and one clue, you have to try and guess which room of the school we are in. So Nightingale, sound effect one. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> sound effect two. Lovely. And our clue for you. If I were to stand in the doorway. Oh yeah, and yeah, and your visual clue. Nightingale, if you stand in the doorway, what can you see? I can see two thumbprint machines and a hand gel dispenser. Two thumbprint machines and a hand gel dispenser. Okay, so those are your two sound effects. That's your that's your clue. Where are we? We're locked in here. We need you to rescue oh! us. Oh! We could just teleport back through the powers of technology. Okay. <laughs> pa positivity now! Whoop, whoop. Favourite part of the pod. It is necessary part of the pod, I feel, particularly at the moment. I don't know about you, but doing that teleporting from our room of requirement That's has, so exciting. has made me feel I'm a bit so impressed if Dougal can get where that is yeah, and help rescue us. 
Oh yeah, because we're still up. We're both still there. Chippy eyes. Okay, so I'm going into my pod positivity folder where oh. I've been keeping things from this week. Yeah. Um, and one that I really wanted to mention, and this this happened at the end of last week, but I really wanted to get it in. So Raphael Warnock. What a name. That is quite interesting. Raphael, Raphael. Warnock. I love the name Raphael. Um, won his place in the Senate in America, <laughs> and he becomes the first black Democratic senator to be elected from the South, and Georgia's first ever black senator, which I think is amazing. It's so progressive. In his victory speech, he noted that his mother, who'd been a teenage sharecropper, so she'd worked on a plantation which would have been originally run by oh, slaves. Um, so it's the plantations that okay. were originally part of the slave trade. Oh, yeah. So his mother worked as a teenage sharecropper, got to vote for him. Oh. And his, his, his part of his speech said, the 82-year-old hands that used, that used to pick somebody else's cotton went to the polls and picked her youngest son to be a United States senator. That is so amazing. How amazing is that? So I just thought that was super cool. And I know not particularly relevant to us, but, you know, the world is changing. Um, a nurse in um, the West Midlands has been isolating in her caravan for nine months while she's been working oh. in hospital fighting so you must not be named has finally moved back home oh. so she moved out to protect her mother from so oh, you must not be named because really you know it's a real pressure when you've got yeah. older more vulnerable family members so she moved out into a caravan and she moved back home for christmas because her mother got the vaccine oh yeah so her mother had the, 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 the Pfizer the, the vaccine. See, he must not be named vaccine. Yeah, her mother had the vaccine before Christmas, which meant that she didn't need to isolate anymore and she could move back in. Oh, that's so nice. How awesome is that? Yeah. Um, now, I thought you'd like this one. <laughs> Ratatouille, the TikTok musical, has raised over a million dollars for struggling actors. What? Yeah. That's so, amazing. Um, uh, uh, an idea for a musical that started on TikTok was picked up by Disney who, um, who they, they love it when fans kind of engage with the yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, um, the Disney gave uh, CV Productions the green light to produce a fully fledged musical um, as a benefit performance in aid of the Actors Fund, um, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. I love Ratatouille, what a great film. <laughs> and they had um, a 72 hour run that was so successful, a second performance was added on the 10th of January. So it started on TikTok, it was a fan That's thing, brilliant. Ratatouille the Musical, which Disney then staged, and it's raised a million pounds for That's the really Actors Benevol Benevolent Fund. The results are in. Do you have Tom Jones syndrome? <gasps> Do I? Is it rare? It's not unusual. Hey! <laughs> It's not unusual to be loved. Do you know what? We could just wait for the emails to Did roll in from, from the students not getting that joke yeah. at all. The teachers will get the joke and probably the parents, but well, not, not the, the students. students. Going over to our brand new correspondent, um, we're going over to Mrs. Delaney with our World Customs. Hi guys, Nanak here with your this week's weird and wonderful traditions from around the world. Today I want to talk to you about something called Polterabend. The point of this is to help a married couple work together in difficult times. When you think about a wedding, you think about all the planning that goes into your wedding, uh, the invitations, the outfits, the cars, the food. It's all very, very exciting, a wedding, or in my personal experience. This tradition kind of gives a bit of a downer on that, in my opinion. Basically, you have your wedding, and it's a lovely, lovely day. Uh, for example, on my wedding day, I didn't even go to bed till 3 a.m. Um, after your wedding you're really dreary and tired and so you wake up you have your breakfast and then you have to tidy up all the mess from the wedding now in germany polterabend is when the family and friends break dishes or break plates and then the next day the bride and groom have to clean up the mess so very strange tradition here but yes it's all to do with helping uh, the newlywed couple work together in difficult times because you're both tired and uh, you've got to clean up the mess of broken plates everywhere. So uh, not my favourite tradition, certainly don't want it being brought over here to England. There we go. It's my favourite section. You say they're all your favourite Don't section. give me, don't give me that dumbfounded look. Do you know what section this is my favourite? Is it rocking out the room? It is rocking out the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is an opportunity 
for you to get up out of your chair, get away from your screen and spend a minute rocking out with shake us. Shake the right hand. At the roof. Shake the left you hand. You can throw whatever shapes you like. If you haven't stunned them with your exceptional dance If moves, they haven't questioned as what, to what, you're what, doing. what you're doing and whether it is actually educational, then you're not working hard enough. There you go. And actually, this is our little teeny tiny Team Hollywood flash mob at home. Oh, so really you've got it. one minute from now to get up and throw those funky shapes. and I'm sure Mrs. Seep has as well. If you would like to submit your piece of music for Rocking at the Rood, just let me know. Just say on your class folder, Miss, this needs to be used for Rocking at the Rood because I've already contacted some students about using their piece for Rocking at the Rood because some of them are seriously cool. So you guys, get in touch with Miss Wilshire or Mrs. Wilshire and let us know if you want your piece to be used for Rocking at the Rood. How cool! So you're rocking at the rude to your own with music. Music made by students at the rude. Yeah, from your home learning. There you go. And of course, we need to thank Fabio uh, in year seven for our intro to uh, Rockin' at the Rude there. Um, that was a piece of music that he created using Band Lab. So, Fabio, really good job. Thank you very much. What have you done this week to make me feel proud? Napoleon. What have you done this week to make you feel proud? Um, I was quite proud because, uh, as my classes will know, I hurt my knee before oh, you Christmas. Did. Very That's spectacularly. Bad. Had it in a big brace and it's been horrible. And I've been avoiding kind of going on long walks, long walks. because I'm worried about it. And I actually managed. Um, a three mile walk with my Whoa, dog. Whoa, I'm quite pleased that on a good day anyway. So I'm quite pleased, um, I'm quite pleased with that. Yeah, I went for a, a three mile dog walk with, um, with Mrs. Gilbert and nice. her dog, because her dog and my dog are friends and we are allowed to do that if we put the two of us. Nice. Um, so we went on yeah, a lovely three mile dog walk and I was really proud of my knee. I was very proud of your knee. Uh, for managing to cope with it. So it was yeah. nice to be reunited with the ability to walk. <laughs> You, you joke, like, things that you said, you took for granted that... I know, you don't realise how much you miss it until... You don't realise how much you use it. There's peculiar things that I do. I didn't realise how much I kick things. I, I kick things, I kick drawers closed, I kick doors open, I kick things under the sofa <laughs> they're causing a mess. Nice and girls. <laughs> what have you done this week to make you feel proud? Oh, I made a vegetarian lasagna. Nice. I, I can I can cook many things. You know I can cook many things. On, on, oh, she does a good roast. On occasion, I have frequented. Um, no, Mrs. Wilsh Napoleon has frequented my house um, to join me in dinner. non lockdown. In yeah, non lockdown, not not now. Um, Careful, you'll be sat in the room with we're friends. Uh, are we not? Um, yes, yeah, so obviously in non-lockdown times, um, Mrs. Wilshire would, uh, and, and the family would join, and I would um, cook. Um, and Mrs. Wilshire kindly said that I can do a very good roast, which um, do. I don't mean to brag, but you do I do a good roast. We, we used to live together, didn't we, Mrs. Wilshire? We did. I used to, well, let me rephrase that. I used to live with you in your house. Um, and, you know, you're a bit like a mum to me, and, you know, kind of looked after me. You can't say that! Well, you are, you Winter look after age me. me. You looked after me when I was, you know, a, a, you know, a, a young bairn. Um, 
and you know no one makes lasagna like your mum right well you make the perfect lasagna and I never feel like I've been ma- I've been able to match um, lasagna is quite daunting it you have really to be prepared difficult. to put aside about four hours for lasagna and you did offer it to me very I generously did. for lunch and I had to decline because um I can't cope with hot lunches because then my brain thinks it's time for bed and you find wearing a pajamas to eat yeah, I said it would I said it would traumatize the year sevens and the RC because I can only really eat hot food in the evenings and then because then my, my brain winds like down soup for lunch oh my god no it oh has to be god. a sandwich I mean you I don't think soup is a meal anyway soup is not a meal Shout outs now! Oh, where do we start? Well, it's it was brilliant. It's been a brilliant week. Um, we've had so many shout outs and I really hope we can get all of them in. So I'm really sorry if we've missed you, but um, we know from YouTube that uh, the students are listening we and do. we've had many a, sh- many a comment on our, uh, our various Google Classrooms. And we've had some brilliant shout outs. Um, so we'd like to say hello to Jaden who said, thanks guys, send my thanks to Nightingale as well, I'm going to listen to every podcast so I can stay happy during lockdown, Aww. which is really nice. You're welcome, Jaden. Um, we've had um, a shout out from Carla, who wants to shout out to her dog, Speckles, who is a two-year-old That spaniel. is a great name for a dog. Um, she did say, the podcast is very good and a great idea, I think my dog Speckles is enjoying it because she has now fallen asleep. I'm not sure that's the definition of enjoyment. We've put a dog to sleep with our last podcast. Maybe it was the lullaby that I sang. Oh, Maybe. I didn't sing one last Although we need to be like, Speckles, Speckles, <laughs> hello, what's this? Wait, Hi, Speckles, speckles and boy, girl. Hi, Speckles, hello, Speckles, hello, Speckles. Hello, speckles. Hello, speckles. Hi. And somewhere, every, <laughs> every dog dog's <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Including Mrs. Wilshire's very naughty dog that ate... Uh, Mr. Wilshire's breakfast, breakfast this morning. <laughs> she did. Um, we had we had a shout out from Millie uh, saying that um, she thought the podcast was really good and she sent us in some fun facts, which I said we would try and get into um, future podcasts. Nice, so there's nice. some fun facts. And um, Millie also said that um, she and her little sister listened to the podcast and she loved the gory facts and laughed so much. So oh, that's, nice. that's really great. Nice. Um, we've had one from Imogen saying that um, she absolutely loved the Hollywood Happy Hour podcast. She loves listening as it helps us to, helps her to focus. We've made her Friday and she can't wait Aww. for more episodes. Thanks for keeping everyone's spirits up with your effort. I really appreciate it. Oh, it was Imogen, really you are nice. so welcome. I love reading that one. Um, uh, also, love it when it's themed. Okay, mm. so I got one from Sophie, who's in my year eight class. Nice, Who nice. said, hi, Napoleon. Hey, nice. I just wanted to say congratulations on your successful podcast. I also have my own podcast channel, which I started three days ago oh, on Castbox. So cool. I listened to her podcast. It's really, really cool. Um, so she wanted to shout out, and her channel is Teen Time Talk. And her first um, podcast was about um, self-care. So it's four minutes on nice. kind of mental health and self-care. And the brilliant thing that I wanted to kind of lift to steal from um, Sophie's podcast was a bit where she said, don't leave until tomorrow, things that you can do today. Oh, good. That's the little thing about procrastination there. Procrastination. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, how could that be relevant to maybe some of our listeners? Maybe some of our listeners could be doing their home Home learning learning today. Yeah. Not leaving it until tomorrow. Don't put it off, guys. So what was that? So CastBox, did you say? Um, yeah, so she's on CastBox and her channel is Teen Time Talk. Okay, so check it out, guys. Make sure, go and give Sophie some support. Check out our, podga- our podcast sister, Sophie. And it's really, it was really nice, actually. It was a really um, uplifting thing to listen to. Nice. Um, and we've had one from Riley. But hey, miss, it's Riley. <laughs> Could you give a shout out to all of the staff and students in school trying their hardest to complete work and Aww. teach? Which I thought was really nice yeah, and just really lovely nice. to read. And I wanted to kind of share that with Aww, everyone. Right. What so a nice chap you are. Isn't that lovely? Um, and I believe you've got one from Chloe. Oh yeah, I've got a, a lovely, this came in just this morning. This is a fresh, hot off the press. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. Like a hot cross bun. Chloe, uh, in year 10, says, hi Nightingale and Napoleon. I love the idea of a podcast. It is truly making me smile. I love the same for Mr. Oh, I love the name for Mr. Tozer. Yeah, My right. shout out would be to all of the teachers who are doing their best to keep our education going. I would also like to tell everyone they are truly amazing and t- can do great things. And she's got one, two, three, four, five exclamation marks. Five. So that is pretty wow. like yeah. Um, thank you for everything you're doing. Oh, and by the way, for the last time you poo pooed my quarantine joke. Chloe says. Um, I loved the quarantine joke. Thank you, Chloe. I'm so pleased that my sense of humour is uh, is cheering you up. <laughs> and um, we also got another brand new one coming today from Josh. 
saying that he would like to propose that there should be a segment where we tell them what's happening in film and media. Oh. Okay. And that is in the works. We've well, already yeah, spoken we are planning to, that already. to the drama department yeah. and they are on it with some of that. So on it like Sonic. On it like a Jane Austen bonnet. So ah. watch this space on yeah. that one because it was coming. Mm-hmm. Right now, I know that we were going to try and rein in the Hamilton references, but I really feel I, that... Wh- this, why? Why are we reining them in? This is the point. Why are we reining them in? This is the why point. Why are we reining them in? <laughs> this is the point where we need to go... Here, Here comes the general, general, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the general. The moment you've been waiting for. Here comes the general. The pride oh, of... Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I, had it, sorry. I had it in my head. No, do it again, do it no, again, do it again. No, no. Do it too again. Late. It's too late. Here comes the general. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the general. The moment you've been waiting for. Here comes the general. The pride of Zembard Lane. Oh, good. I know, right? Is there another Here Comes the General? Uh, there is. Oh. Here Comes the General! <gasps> Lord Nelson! Oh, is that Mr. McCormick's? Well, I thought if we were giving Mr. McCormick code a name. code name, Lord Admiral Nelson begins with an N, mm-hmm. captain of the ship. He really you is. You know, oh. winning the war. Perfect code name for mm-hmm. Mr. Mm-hmm. Mr. McCormick. And, um, I hear you, I hear you. Just like I, I felt like it'd be fair because we didn't really give Mr. Tozer a choice. No. It was fair that we don't give Mrs. McCormick a choice either. Yeah, I don't think anyone's so, choice. Um, we challenged mm-hmm. quite. I mean, we laid cheekily, down the gauntlet, <laughs> but we launched a gauntlet at uh, Mr. McCormick to come on and record. A li- I just said a limerick. I just pulled the first thing out of my head, and you know what? He's, He's gone only and gone it. and done He's it. He's gone and done we it. We have. A limerick from, from Nelson. Nelson. Lord Admiral Lord Nelson. Admiral Nelson. Mr. McCormick. Uh, Mr. McCormick, the captain of our ship. So, Nelson. Take it away. I just wanted to say hello to everybody, and I hope that you're all holding up really, really well. Um, and I wanted also to say a huge thank you to Miss Wilshire and Mrs. Wilshire. Uh, Napoleon and Nefertiti. Nightingale. Night- Nightingale. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Nefertiti is Mrs. Smith. Literally couldn't even get that right. There's a lot of um, end names. Yeah, there are a lot of end names, and I've tried my very hardest. Um, <laughs> and I'm so I'm so grateful to you all for doing this because it's oh, amazing. Nice. Um, and I have been asked for my limerick, so here we go. My limerick is about stick to itness. Stick to itness is the key to a happy existence. Don't ever give up. The real key is persistence. When things start to fail, just stop and inhale, relax. The solution will surely make an appearance. Oh, bravo, that's very good. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was quite topical. Yeah. And I thought that you guys out there listening to the podcast might appreciate a little bit of um, advice on stick to itness. It's something that I've had to um, live by over the last two yeah. weeks, shall we say. <laughs> it's been a bit tricky. A lot of us have. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you're all well at home and um, I'm looking forward to coming back on this podcast very, very regularly. I love it. I think I think you probably will be, Mr McCoy. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Do you know what I really love about that? What? That limerick really, I really feel like Nelson really gets this. Mm. Really gets the point And of also I podcast. feel like he's summed up everybody. How everybody is feeling. Yeah, it's almost like lockdown. Yeah. In five lines. Did he write it himself? I cannot disclose that information. Oh, actually, if you're in school and, you're li- and you've listened to the podcast, mm. top thing you could do would be to, to, to compliment... Te- yeah, to compliment Mr McCormick and tell Nelson. him what an amazing... Nelson, what an amazing job he did. Yeah, there you yeah. go. First appearance. <laughs> so, you want to get your shout-outs in. Also, what we didn't pitch last week is if you've got if you've got a friend with a birthday coming yes. up, we're more than happy to sing happy we birthday. We have a friend with a birthday coming we up. We do have a, a friend with a birthday coming up. So, happy birthday, birthday to Jen. It's yeah. her birthday on Sunday. Lockdown birthday. All the cool people have yeah. had one now. Mm-hmm. So, if it's your birthday or if it's someone um, in your household's birthday or a yeah. friend's birthday. Dog's birthday, cat's birthday. Yep. We're, we're more than happy. We, we, we speak dog. Um, send us in <laughs> your... <laughs> <laughs> send us in your birthday shout outs and we will get them on to next week's your dog's podcast. nodding right now because they know what I said you don't know what I said to your dog but your dog does <laughs> um, but it has been really lovely to have so yeah, many students yeah. get in touch and so do, positive. do keep doing that because mm-hmm. that's the only way we really know yeah. if it's reaching Co- people commenting on Google Classroom as well we had loads of like an influx of like really positive comments so we may not necessarily respond to everyone um, we try but um, actually I haven't read out the best one because okay. we actually had an email from a parent as well, oh, yeah, which we was did. brilliant. So Holly's 
um, parents got in touch yeah, they did. to say, we wanted to drop you a quick email to say thank you so much for today's podcast. Um, our daughter Holly is in year seven and listened to it today. I this know, is I the teach bit, Holly. This is the bit that made me laugh. She was giggling so much throughout, I had to stop her and check she was actually doing something school-related, <laughs> which is absolutely brilliant. She was having too much fun, too much fun. and I needed to check. Um, and she absolutely loved it, especially the Hamilton references. Who doesn't love Hamilton? Well, really? come on. I know. Um, Holly, watch this space because you get to learn about Hamilton in your age. Hashtag just saying. Oh, very mm-hmm. exciting. Um, and she was so animated to tell us about it afterwards. We think you're all doing an amazing job. Thank you. Oh. So to get that from a parent as well, yeah, so not just nice. students, but parents as well, is absolutely lovely. And um, that's it. That's it. That's it is the week. end of the pod. It's the end of the pod. End of the pod. End of the pod. I mean, look at this. We are harmonising. Like, we have been doing this for years. Well. I mean, we have been doing it for years. What, harmonising, yeah. yeah? Yeah. But that is it. That takes you to the end of week two of this <laughs> Lockdown the Sequel. <laughs> Um, So yeah, we would love to hear what you've done to make yourself feel proud. Maybe you made your mum a cup of tea. Yeah, I'd say that's quite a nice thing to be doing. I would love someone to make me a cup of tea in the morning. I've tried to get the dog to do it, but she just ends up drinking it. Anyway, sorry. That's the that's that's it, folks. That's it. That's your lot for week two. Uh, Keep the shoutouts coming in. Keep the comments coming in. Um, so let us know if you've worked out where we were in the room of requirement. Let us have your shout outs. Let us have your what have you done this week to make you feel proud. Send us any music if you want us to. to or we're getting on the, the rocking at the rude. Yeah. And we will see you same time next week. Yes, we will. And in the meantime, keep each other safe. Keep washing those hands. And, and keep, keep tuning in to the Triple H. H. Woo, woo, woo.